Xbox experts. All right, hybrid extreme X clamp tutorial repair kits. All right, that's the one we're gonna go watch. All right, let's go right here. I'm gonna just show you just a little bit of this. They say they're one millimeter too high on their video. All right, they break this thing up into zones uh, as to most flexing, less flexing, and even less flexing. Okay, flexing zones. They say this is the zone that flexes the most, this flexes lesser, and then these flex even less. Garbage. All right, let's take a look at their... Okay, this is what they say the flexing schematic, uh, flexing, flexing schematic for the X, for the stock setup with X clamps. This is total bull. Okay. First, these standoffs are the exact same height as these standoffs. Okay. And now they want to lie to you that putting their bolts in here is going to make this board perfectly flat. That is a lie as well because after they sanded this off now this board is actually going to flex even more or more like what they're showing above here in the exact opposite and I'll prove that to you in just a second here they say these standoffs are one millimeter actually I think they changed their mind a little bit later on down the line uh, let's go to Step one of the actual fix. We'll open that in a new tab. All right, let's go down here. Okay, this is a much better picture. Open link in new tab. All right. Yeah, they changed their mind from it being one millimeter too high to 0.75 millimeters higher than the other parts. So they're saying this standoff here is. 0.375 millimeters or 0.75 millimeters too high okay now let me back off the size of that all right now they're saying this is higher than all of these these are 0.3 millimeters and these are 0.375 millimeters okay now I'm going to cut to my proof that's going to show you that these standoffs are absolutely not higher than the case screws that they're talking about here. I'm going to use these. They're unopened. get a nice clean shot of that. That way you can verify this for yourself at home. Okay. I'm going to use two bags and an old case. Notice it is still dirty. It's not drilled out. But what we're going to do we're going to open this unopened bag and we're going to open it up and dump it into the case here. Let's see. Just to make it easy. the other bag. Okay. 
like I said, you can verify this at home if you want to spend about $3 for these types of screws. These are identical to the last batch. Try and get a nice clear shot of that. Okay. Now, to demonstrate to demonstrate this, I'm going to run these screws through each and every single one of these. And I should have dumped these on the side here. I'm going to run these screws through each and every one of the standoffs. Okay. Got a motherboard standoff here. All I'm doing is just running it through. I'm going to take the little bolt. That way it stays in place. Hopefully this don't make a liar out of me. <laughs> okay. So we're going to tighten that down. Basically what we're going to do is make some legs. Okay. And if Xbox experts theory of the standoffs being one millimeter or for that matter 0.75 millimeters taller than the others, then there will be a noticeable difference when I stand this up on this table here. single one. Sorry about the length of time it takes, but I didn't want them accusing me of sanding off any of the legs. So, in order to do this, I have to keep it all one video unedited. Otherwise, they'll accuse me of purposely bending the case or something. Because I know what they'll do. I've dealt with them enough. And I've dealt with, and I've dealt with the aftermath of their boxes and their bolt kits that they sell. You know they actually sell them bolt kits as preventative measures bef before you get red lights. They want your kids to tear these boxes apart, put them bolt kits and all that other good stuff in there. It's actually going to kill them a lot faster than if they had just left it alone. Okay. Excited, are you excited to see the results and the outcome of what I'm doing? Okay, I'm sticking it through one of the standoffs that they said is 0.75 millimeters too tall. So we're getting there. this on every single motherboard screw that would lock the motherboard down as well as the standoffs that they claim 
are too tall. One of these screws through every single motherboard lockdown screw as well as all of the case lockdown screws to include the two standoffs that they claim are too tall and we're going to set this on this table okay just to show you that there is no sanding done to this box of any of the standoffs. I'm going to go through all the way around through here. Okay. So you can see that there's no cheating. Nobody sanded off the standoffs. Let 
me get a one millimeter washer. Hmm. I had one here somewhere. Here it is. That is a one millimeter washer. Washer look like it'll fit underneath any of them legs. Here's a piece of paper. This piece of paper is less than 0 0.03 millimeters in thickness. Just barely fit underneath that leg there. Actually, I don't even want to fit another. Barely a little bit. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to glue this leg. It went under. Let's take a look, real close look. Okay. It went under it. So let's take our washer. Is that going under it? Nope. That's not going under it. That, not going under it. And that is that screw there. Not the standoff. Here's the standoff. Let's find the standoff. What's this? Standoff. Let's, let's make sure we got that nice and clear so we can see it. Standoff. I got my finger on it, see? Standoff. My finger's still on it. That's the standoff leg right there. don't even want to slide underneath it. Let's try the washer. This is a one millimeter washer. Man. Okay. I did get it to go underneath it a little bit. Of course then again I got it to go underneath the other leg a little bit earlier as well. Okay. Now let's take a look over here. Will the paper go underneath that one? No. Alright, let's turn this one off. I'm going to show you the standoff. Okay, here's the standoff. I'm going to put my finger on it. Very carefully so you know exactly where it is. Sorry. That's the standoff. Very carefully. I'm going to go down find that standoff. There it is. sitting on a piece of paper. Okay, here's the standoff on the back side of the box. I'm going to go down. I'm going to find that leg. There it is. See my finger? That's the leg. Okay. Now, here's my hand over here. There's my other hand so you know there's no pressing down. Does that look like it's touching the wood? Let's kind of push the washer in over here in front of it. Okay. Well, 
going to scoot this camera over so I can get in there. obvious that that leg is turn this trying to do this there we go it's obvious so that this camera focus to fit the paper underneath it. Let's get as close as we can to it. Right. Now, look at some of the legs further off, like back here. There we go. See this one? Got a little teeny bit of light underneath it. Slide that underneath there. Okay. And then you got this one way over here. These two have a little bit of light underneath them. Okay, just enough light. Kind of funny to me. Let's try and get a better shot. A little bit more of a lower angle. Okay. That's the standoff. You can see it right there. That's one of the motherboard case screws. Let this focus in. Is there any height difference? Do you see any height difference at all? Any height difference? They all are touching the ground. The exception of a few that I can just barely slide a piece of paper under. Barely. Alright. See that? Clear, ain't it? Alright, so let's try turning this case around. We'll look at the rear standoff. That'll be the rear standoff right there. a little bit. Right. See that? It just barely fits underneath there. Barely. Let's go over to this leg. Barely fits underneath this one. That is a motherboard. That is a standoff. Listen closely. I'm 
I'm going to stick that up underneath there again. Now, listen closely when I move the paper around. Listen closely when I move the paper around underneath this one. How about this one? Any, like it's any higher. And that one's actually touching. Alright, so I think that conclusively proves that all of the standoffs are, in fact, the exact same height. Now, how could they possibly get that wrong and say that it's a different height. Well, maybe they measured from here to the top, from here to the top. Now if you want to do this at home, let's see, do I have a ruler? Take a flexible ruler and put it right here. Bend it to where it'll go across the top side of this and then back over here or around this way. That'll also show you that they're the exact same height by the ruler actually making contact here as well as on the upper ridge of the case screws. Okay? So that is conclusive proof that these standoffs are not 0.7 mil 0.75 millimeters or one millimeter as claimed by their video higher than the rest of the standoffs. In fact, according to these screws, the entire motherboard with standoffs included is absolutely flat. Wow. You've seen it for yourself. Try it for yourself at home. Every single standoff is the exact same height, meaning that the motherboard is exactly flat when it's all screwed down in the box. Not like their picture. Let's take a look at your picture. Okay, uh, this is a picture that we showed earlier showing their depiction of the standoffs that was in the box that I just showed you. That was a arcade version, one of the first out that just put out the HDMI and I tried this with the first generation Xbox 360 that was non-HDMI got the same results. Hey, it's possible that my case was bent. Who knows, but 0.75 millimeters is a large gap. So I have trouble believing that uh, this could have possibly been, uh, I don't know how they measured. Now let's take a look at uh, their claims that the bolting prevents flexing. Okay, well, we'll put this off to the side. And since we've already proven that all of the standoffs are exactly flat. When the X clamps are in place and the Xbox 360 motherboard is inside the case and the T8 screws are tightened down properly like the manufacturer does for most part. The heat sinks themselves are attached to the casing of the box. Not to the motherboard and not to the X clamps. They don't wiggle, they don't move, they don't slide side to side. Okay. The X clamps has nothing to do with this heat sink or the case. The X clamp is designed 
to evenly apply pressure at five different points upward, holding the motherboard in an exact flat position, making perfect contact with the underside of this heatsink. Now, thermal dynamics dictates that anything that is heated expands and anything that is cooled contracts. Right? The X clamp allows the board and from the expansion of the heat sink warming and the expansion of the chip warming allows the board to ever so lightly, and this is probably maybe one, uh, 0 0.001 millimeter or less of actual expansion, to actually expand and stay under pressure because it's only pushing up, not down. Okay, it's only keeping nice contact. So as the heat, the chip heats up and the heat sink heats up, they both expand just ever so slightly. Okay. Now, the spring tension of the X clamp would have no degradation in strength over such a small amount of flex. Less than 0 0.0005 flex from the motherboard with the X clamps installed okay if the if the if there was any flexing of the motherboard the only direction the motherboard could possibly flex would be downward away from the heat sink in which case your box would instantly overheat because it would lose contact with the heat sink. Thus, you would have gotten two red lights, not three, two, almost instantly, because it would break the contact or break the thermal paste away from the heat sink. That has nothing to do with the solder. These heat sinks don't move. The I beam setup of the case makes this extremely rigid and very inflexible. So for you to drill out these holes and put bolts in it and say it's fixing the flexing? How? You tell me. How is bolting these in doing any better a job than what is already there? Okay, now with it bolted in, there's still the problem of downward flex. That's why they use the cardboard or or heavy foam. Okay, this is a foam pad. If you look real close, you can actually see the imprint of the chip that was in it and the imprint of the inner part of the case. This is where they drilled it out. How is using this foam pad that obviously pressed quite hard into the thing that is a lot harder than the foam pad that they're using in their hybrid kit and using the metal casing of the box which is a lot more sturdy and rigid than that flat piece of metal that have no ridges with no I-beam support to prevent it from flexing. How is that any different than using this and bolting it straight to the case? All right. The reason they always use a styrofoam pad here is because of the flexing or expansion. The expansion of the heat sink and the chip and anything around the board that warms up, it must be allowed to push itself away from the heat sink and still maintain contact.
which is exactly what the X clamp does and which is what these foam pads do. Problem with it is, is these foam pads after they heat up so many times they don't flex back. <sighs> they don't. All right? They actually stay compressed. So your foam pads and your hybrid X clamp fix is a crock of crap. Let's see. Number one cause of red light issues is not. Well, you know what? That's a different video altogether. I want you to explain to me how bolting the box is in any way better than the X clamps. Remember, these are not held into the motherboard. Most of you guys using the bolting method bolt straight to the motherboard and free it from the center portion of the case, allowing the entire center of the board to bow as much as a quarter of an inch. How is that better? Okay. Over the years, they went to drilling out the case because they realized that it was bowing so much it was literally ripping the solder balls off of the other chips so they started drilling the case to try and simulate and lock down the motherboard the same as the X clamp did or I should say the heat sinks originally did and then they started using the foam pad to try and simulate the X clamp itself the X clamp is a thousand times more superior to that foam pad when it comes to these boxes, especially if it overheats because it applies a constant pr upward pressure from the board and allows micro expansion from thermal expansion from both the chip and the motherboard as well as the solder and everything and it keeps absolute contact and then as it cools that spring action continues to keep that upward pressure keeping perfect contact so let me ask you one more thing your box lasted three four five years you put a, one of these repair kits in it two weeks to three months with a home repair 98 percent of them and because they're selling you the bolt kit for a home repair you're gonna have to heat gun your chips which has a 98 percent mortality rate by popping solder closer to 99 percent mortality rate by popping solder at home because the only people that can use a heat gun and get close to a 60% success rate is somebody who does it quite often. Right? And even at that, I think 60% is giving them good odds. Now, are they going to admit to that? Hell no. Do you think anybody that's telling you that they're a professional that's using a heat gun is going to say, yeah, 60% of the time I lose a box? Do you think they're going to say, yeah, 60% of the time I lose a box because I popped the solder beneath the chips or I uh, got the chips too hot or uh, I warped the motherboard so bad by putting too much heat in one spot that it did it. Or uh, I accidentally popped the solder underneath the chip that wasn't supposed to be reflowed. Now, use a heat gun on the motherboard. I guarantee you, even if you got them exactly right and you got your reflow exactly right you've damaged the solder beneath all the other chips which is why you wind up with south bridge issues and uh, A and A solder issues and stuff like that 
99% of every single red light issue these boxes get is going to deal directly, especially first time, is going to deal directly with the GPU and or the CPU chips only. Unless somebody's gotten in there and did a heat gun trick. This video was debunking the bolting. I'll go into more detail as to solder cracking and chip drift and the bogus garbage misleading information concerning uh, tin whiskers. Are they an issue with this box? Find out soon enough on my channel. For now, Explain to me, anybody, how the bolts correct the case. Where did I put it? Explain to me how the bolts correct the case. When I just showed you flat out that the Standoffs are exactly flat, exactly flush, 100% right down the line, every single one for the motherboard and every single one for the standoffs. And I showed you that uh, your heat sinks are actually attached to the casing via the legs of the X-Clamp. Let's take a close look. attached. The X clamp will lock into that little groove right there and hold the motherboard up and then set on the case. It doesn't go in between this, it goes around it. I think real quick, I'll put an X-clamp underneath there just to show you how it sits. And this will be just a little bit of flexing here. And then the center part there, see how it's just a little bit of a gap. See if we can get some light to reflect through there. See the actual leg of the X clamp touching the metal portion, more metal portion. Let's see if we can get a nice clear shot of that. Okay, the X clamp leg right there, actually touching the metal board. it 
straight to the metal portion of the case. how that sits there. The leg of the heat sink is attached directly to the metal portion of the case. That allows for no movement of the heat sinks right, left, up, or down. And the only thing that allows any kind of movement whatsoever is the X-clamp up on the motherboard. That's the X clamp leg. Okay. This pushes up on the motherboard in four locations all the way around. So does this one. That's locked dead down to the case. The same as that leg there. One last time. How is the bolts correcting anything? At all. It's common sense, folks. Obviously, you never looked at it. You just took their word for it. Don't take their word for it. Demand proof of their background. Demand to find out how old they are. Okay? I've been doing electronics for well over 30 years. Closer to 35 years. I have actual on-the-job experience in the military as a component level electronics tech. Now, when it comes to their bull claims about tin whiskers, they should have read the articles all the way through and read articles from other people other than what other people were spouting off that didn't read the entire articles. I was in the military. I dealt directly with that. I know exactly why they got their exemptions. And I'm going to tell you all on a different video. X clamps, I want to vote. Do you think I adequately described and proved to you that the X clamp replacement bolt kits, even the hybrid fix, which is a flat piece of metal and doesn't have any kind of rigidness to it whatsoever, did that correct anything? 